So what's the secret sauce here? Because most players in this industry are losing money hand over fist. Well, Xiaomi is using a strategy known as traffic diversion. Essentially, they're leveraging the popularity and traffic from their consumer electronics like smartphones and IoT devices to drive interest in their vehicles. This approach is somewhat analogous to how subway systems, while they operate at a loss, contribute to the economic vitality of surrounding real estate and businesses. Xiaomi is applying this logic to their automotive sector, and let me tell you, it's paying off. Xiaomi's gross prof profit for the electric vehicles was reported at 15.4%, which for a newcomer, Xiaomi is one of the newest players in the electric vehicle uh, industry is impressive. For context, NIO's gross profit in Q1 was about 4.9%, so Xiaomi's figures show that they're managing their costs quite effectively. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. While Xiaomi is doing well, their automotive expenses are still quite high. What's going on, everyone? My name's Obi, and welcome back to the Courtside Financial Podcast, the podcast where we talk about business and technology. In today's episode, we have a special focus on two prominent players in the EV industry, Xiaomi and Tesla. While their strategies are quite different, there have been some uh, interesting developments from both companies. So we're going to be talking about those developments and how it pertains to one of my favorite companies, neo so it's going to be super interesting super insightful uh super useful for anyone who's invested in the electric vehicle industry or following the electric uh vehicle industry so without further ado we're going to get into the video but before we do so make sure you hit the like button make sure you hit the subscribe button click the notification bell uh leave a comment down below after watching the video as all your engagement surely does go a long way in helping out the channel helping the video to reach a broader audience so let's get started here Let's kick things off with Xiaomi. Now, if you're not following the news, uh, to give you an update, Xiaomi is no longer just a smartphone company. They've expanded their reach far beyond that. They are also an electric vehicle company. They've entered the market with their Xiaomi Auto and their strategy is definitely something worth noting. According to their recent Q2 report, while their current automotive division is currently um, operating at a loss, overall financials for Xiaomi look solid. So what's the secret sauce here? because most players in this industry are losing money hand over fist. Well, Xiaomi is using a strategy known as traffic diversion. Essentially, they're leveraging the popularity and traffic from their consumer electronics, like smartphones and IoT devices to drive interest in their vehicles. This approach is somewhat analogous to how subway systems, while they operate at a loss, contribute to the economic vitality of surrounding real estate and businesses. Xiaomi Xiaomi is applying this logic to their automotive sector, and let me tell you, it's paying off. Xiaomi's gross prof profit for the electric vehicles was reported at 15.4%, which for a newcomer, Xiaomi is one of the newest players in the electric vehicle uh, industry is impressive. For context, NIO's gross profit in Q1 was about 4.9%, so Xiaomi's figures show that they're managing their costs quite effectively. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. While Xiaomi is doing well, their automotive expenses are still quite high, with significant R&D expense and, of course, marketing loss. This raises a crucial question for us NIO investors. Is it even possible for NIO to adapt a similar strategy to Xiaomi? Well, Neo has been a pioneer in creating a lifestyle brand around its vehicles, from Neo houses to unique customer experiences. However, Neo doesn't have the same diversified product ecosystem that Xiaomi has. But what if Neo expanded its ecosystem far beyond cars? I mean, they're trying to do so with the mobile phone, but the mobile phone is something more so for people who have the car to buy. Imagine Neo branded home solutions or IoT products, products that complement Neo's already comprehensive EV ecosystem. This could be an untapped revenue stream that helps 
offset some of the high expense that's associated with being a new energy vehicle manufacturer. Now let's shift gears and talk about Tesla. We all know that Tesla has been at the forefront of autonomous uh, vehicle technology, but they appear to be having a bit of a roadblock. Quite literally, actually, reports are emerging that Tesla's full self-driving uh, system has been banned in China for the time being. So what are the concerns? The concerns are accidents in the US and data security concerns. China's always been cautious when it comes to data security, especially with foreign companies. Tesla's challenges here should be a wake up call for NEO. While NEO has its own advanced driver assistance systems, it's crucial that they stay ahead of the regulatory game. If NEO can successfully navigate these hurdles, perhaps by um, emphasizing local partnerships and um, getting data to remain in China, they could turn this into a competitive advantage. This situation also puts NEO into a unique position. If Tesla's FSD continues to face these regulatory hurdles, NEO could capture more market share by offering robust China compliant uh, autonomous driving solution. This could actually be a defining moment for NEO's tech stack, especially if they can bring something unique to the table that uh, resonates with China regulators and consumers alike. And let's not forget with Tesla potentially be potentially being uh, limited to a few cities like Shanghai, this could open up opportunities for NEO to solidify itself in key regions all across China. What does this all mean for NEO? We're looking at two distinct, two distinct potential strategies here. Xiaomi's diversified approach and Tesla's focus on cutting edge technology with some regulatory risk. For NEO, the key takeaway here should be balance. NEO already has a strong Strong band, brand, excuse me, and a loyal customer base, but there's always room for growth, especially in this industry. Xiaomi's strategy shows the power of diversification, something Neo could explore more aggressively. On the other hand, Tesla's challenges showcase the importance of regulatory foresight and the need for a localized approach in China. At the end of the day, NEO's path forward will likely involve a good blend of both strategies. They need to continue innovating with their core products like the ET7 and battery swapping technology, while also considering how that how they can diversify revenue streams, whether it's through new product lines, partnerships, or expanding into more adjacent markets. The goal should be to create a more resilient business that can weather the ups and downs of what we know as the EV market. And for us, NEO investors and enthusiasts, we'll be keeping a close eye on how everything unfolds here. It's not just about what NEO's doing today, but how can they leverage their strengths to create a sustainable future for the world and for their business. All right, that's it for today's episode of the Courtside Financial Podcast. I hope that you found this episode insightful and that it got you thinking uh, about the future of NEO and the broader EV landscape. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit the like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button button uh click the notification bell icon leave a comment down below your engagement really does go a long way in helping out the channel helping us to reach a broader audience and continue to serve more people with valuable information this is ob signing off and i'll catch you guys in the next episode of the courtside financial podcast but until then be safe stay informed and remember to do your own research and come to your own conclusions before making financial decisions peace out